Hello everyone! It's really becoming my catchphrase these days, I suppose. In this video, I want to introduce datasets and talk about how you might be able to take a dataset that you found online through your search uh, for data and translate it into a data frame that is gonna be workable for your specific project. Uh, the first thing that I wanna introduce here in, in the video is I'd like to uh, show you kind of a very basic research design setup. Um, the way that I like to organize these flat rectangular data sets that are going to soon be filled with data is uh, to first of all put the unit as the uh, first column here reflexively it's always going to be in that first that a column just the, so that I always have a chance uh, to keep track of what my specific units are in this case in this research uh, question these are going to be um, average Americans age 18 and up um, and then in the second column, I put my dependent variable. So in this case, the dependent variable, I've put these little notes here. You can see the, the little purple um, things in, in, the, in the top right corner of each cell. I put this to remind myself that this variable that I'm going to eventually call Trump, I'm essentially looking for an operationalization of whether people approve or disapprove of Donald Trump's job as president. So I'm interested in finding out the answer to the question, why do people like or dislike Donald Trump's uh, uh, job in office? I have a hunch that their perceptions of the economy are going to have some kind of impact on that variable. And so my independent variable, as you can see from the little note here, is economic perceptions. So I want to know, do people think that the national economy is good or is it not so good? I've also included two potential control variables, two potential confounders that I think are going to have an impact on this relationship. One of them, as you might imagine, is party identification. So I've put a little note here to indicate that control variable one in my study is going to be party ID. And then the second one is very self-explanatory, is just age. I think the older you are, the more likely you're going to think the economy is good, um, because as we know, um, there's a big gap uh, divide uh, today that's not just dividing people um, in, in terms of uh, sort of a, a wealth gap across, um, you know, the, the uh, individual level, uh, but also across the generational at the cohort level. And so I want to know a little bit about age as well as a potential confounder between these things. We also know, of course, uh, to complete the confound that older people generally like Trump more than younger people. So maybe this is confounding the link between econ and Trump. But so to answer this research question, I need data. And in searching for that data, I have found at least one study that I think will allow me to answer my question. And so I went onto the um, American National Election Study website. I looked for, again, I'm looking at a national sample. This is one of the gold standard sources for data on political topics. And I was able to find the 2019 pilot study. It's got about 3,000 people who took the study. It's a very large uh, survey, internet mode, um, and you'll see that weighted analysis recommended. We're gonna forget about that for the time being because we are uh, maybe not advanced enough to do weighted analysis. But the first thing that I want to do when evaluating this study and whether or not I think that it's good for my, uh, for my purposes is to take a look at, first of all, the user's guide uh, and the code book here. And so this is something that you're going to want to read for whichever study it is that you uh, find, either based on your ICPSR search or based on uh, whatever other uh, method you use to, to determine the data set that you're using or data sets plural. You want to always find some kind of user's guide um, to, the, to the study. And so you'll see here that it's got all this great, very useful information here, 3,000 cases. Here's the field period. It was in the field at the very end of 2018. Um, it's a, it took people about 33 minutes to, to um, interview. Um, let's see, what else do we need to know about this? It's, um, it's a, a high quality sample, essentially, that is what we need to know. You can read more about this. Uh, you can see that there, there's a, a weighted um, analysis component here that, again, is a little a, a bit of a technical topic. You don't want to um, know too much about that. So uh, you can see all sorts of other design issues here as you go through. Um, but you know the cases that are listed here, that's also helpful to see. But so all of this information just allows us to um, know something about the overall, the sample and how it works, and um, ultimately whether or not we think that it's a good data source. I will say just we can bracket some of those considerations when this is coming from ANES. This is one of the highest quality data sources that are, that's available for us. Uh, but the other thing we wanna look at is the actual questionnaire. And that is the list of questions that have actually been asked of people. 
This is going to be an incredibly important resource for you whenever you're doing this kind of study, um, taking variables from other, other people's uh, sources. You always want to know what is the exact wording of this variable, because that is ultimately the indicator. And so what I want to do to check to make sure this is a useful data source is I want to go back to my uh, to my data and I want to make sure that there is a variable that measures Trump approval, a variable that measures economic perceptions, a variable that measures party ID, and a variable that measures age, all present in this data source. Because otherwise, if even one of these is missing, this is not going to be a useful source. So the first thing I can do is just press Control F uh, or Command F if you're on uh, Mac and, and look around in, in this codebook, search in some terms to see if I can find a, a useful um, a useful uh, uh, variable. And so the first thing I'm going to type in badly is Trump. We'll see that we've got a couple of variables here. Retrospective turnout. This is this question says the major candidates for president were Trump and Hillary. Who did you vote for? Are you definitely sure you voted? These aren't very useful because they're not measuring approval. They're measuring something else. They're measuring turnout. And you can even see that there's a little bit of a section header here that means that we maybe need to look on to another variable. Uh, still, this is within this this. Uh, this category, so it's not going to be useful. We can go down. Um, see what was that? How? Uh, here we go. Actually, we, I think we need to go back up again. This is a feeling thermometer. So you can see that this is exactly what people saw. They said they were asked to please look at the graphic below, and it showed this little feeling thermometer thing, this thermometer, and they were able to click on this as survey respondents to give um, a, a rating between very warm or favorable and very cold or unfavorable. And you can see that one of the people that for whom this was asked was Donald Trump. In fact, it was the very first one. And so that variable, if you look inside these brackets, that is what is that is called FT Trump. So that's the variable that I want to be able to use uh, for this for this uh, 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 variable. This is what I want to take from this data, FT Trump. Uh, I can look at some of these other ones, economic perceptions. I could just type in the economy, and I'll look at that. The very first thing I find, oh, this is uh, approval of the way Donald Trump's handling the economy. I don't want that variable. I want something that's a little bit uh, further removed from Donald Trump. I want something that's just an overall economic perception. So we could go down here. Here we go. Econ performance, it gets its own section. So econ now is the variable that I might be interested in. Think about the economy and the country as a whole. Would you say that as compared to one year ago, the nation's economy is now better, about the same or worse? And you see this is a variable that's measured on a scale from one to five, one being much better and five being much worse. That's another thing is we're able to see the actual values that these variables take and their value labels through the use of the codebook and the questionnaire. Um, so I'm going to just skip ahead just uh, for a moment because I do know, I've already uh, verified that this survey does have party ID and age. Most surveys uh, from a political perspective are going to have both of these variables in there, so we can pre be fairly confident. Um, so actually this variable that we're looking for is FT Trump. Um, I'm actually going to re rem uh, remain using my labels because I think they're better. Um, about econ is just my e economic um, evaluation uh, variable, which is called econ now and then I'll find the party ID and age variables in just a second. But so to do this, to actually perform this analysis, I want to go back to the ANES and I want to download this data. And so if I can find this data in um, any number of formats, usually the format that I'm looking for that will be the most helpful to me is CSV. This is a, a format that means comma separated values. It's the most basic format and it avoids some of the stuff that, um, some of the problems that might, you might encounter if you are uh, looking for data that um, are, are generated for the use of specific um, programming uh, languages or specific statistical analysis packages. We don't really want these because we're going to be creating this from scratch and upload, uploading it into R the way that we know how. So a CSV file or even just an Excel file, if you can find it, is going to be the most useful for our purposes. So what I've done is I've downloaded this data. Uh, I've opened up an Excel book. I can actually open up a new one just to show you how it works. I've opened up a book. I've gone up to this data tab. If you go to the data tab here, and then I've actually clicked from text slash CSV, and I've brought in that CSV file. You can see it says comma, comma separated values file. I brought in that CSV using the import function to make sure that it comes in effectively. And what happens is once you click that button is it comes in and it looks a little bit like this. It's just a big giant, and I mean giant, Excel file. It's got, again, about 3,000 plus cases. 
So it's uh, it's got about 3,000 rows, and it's got all the variables. So you can see that this has got a huge number of variables. This is an incredibly big data set. And so um, what we need to do is, we don't need all this information. This is too much information for us, essentially. We've got case ID. I might actually copy the case ID over from this one into my uh, data set just so that I can stay on top of it. I can go back into my data set. I'm just copying this. Um, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm just copying this using the control C. I can also right click and press copy to copy this, again, this entire column. This is one big mistake that people often make is that they'll copy part of the column. You wanna click on the top, that's, see this little B? Click on the, um, the header, above the header, this little thing that yields this little down arrow. This above the header full column selector. I can right click on that and I can press copy or I can just highlight the whole thing by clicking on that, uh, left clicking on that B and I can get it out. I'll come back in here into my book one. I'll, I'll click on the whole column again, and I will paste it in there. I'm gonna just say paste values, and you'll see that it'll, it'll um, put the case ID, that it'll change the, the name of it, just because it's again pasting the top, the top uh, most row as well. But I'm just gonna say, well, I just wanted this to be called ID, so I'll just rename it to ID. And so now you'll see I've got ID, and it's, again, now all of a sudden my data set is how long? Pretty long, it's again, 3,165 um, observations. So it's 3,166 rows, because in these data sets, the top row is always occupied by the variable names. Okay, so now I need to find my Trump uh, evaluation. I believe that was called FT Trump. And so what I'm gonna to do to find this is I'm gonna I'm gonna click on this one here on the very leftmost part of the screen. I'm gonna click on that, and what I'll do is instead of earlier I selected the entire row, now I'm gonna select the entire column. And I'm gonna press uh, Command F or Control F to find. And so I'm gonna look in here to look all the way across these um, these top this top row for that variable name that was included in the questionnaire. FT Trump. And there it is. So this is a really easy way if you've got a giant data set to find each data, each uh, column. So I'll go ahead, this is uh, column AE. Can copy it. And then I'm gonna go back to my data. I'm gonna find that, I'm gonna again select the entire column, not just a piece of it. And I'm going to paste it. I'm gonna say paste values just so that I can preserve my formatting instead of having weird green stuff in there. And you'll see that it renames it again, FT Trump, because it's also once again, it's copied over the top as well. So I'm just gonna call this Trump because I think that this is maybe an easier uh, variable name to deal with. I can do the same for econ. So let's see, the econ variable, let's remind ourselves that was called econ now. So I'll go back to selecting this. I'm gonna go back to the front in order to select the whole thing. I'm gonna press find econ now. Again, I'm using Control F, but you can also, um, I believe there's a button up here, Find and Select. So if you go over to the far right, you'll find that Find and Select button. It'll bring up this, this uh, little box. Econ Now, and you'll see I found it. I can grab this. I can copy, again, copy or Control C, that entire thing. Move back to my data set that I'm building. And I can paste that whole thing into here. Again, I'm gonna call it Econ, because this is not in good camel case. If I wanted this to be, to indicate that this is like people's current economic evaluations, I could call it maybe current econ, but you can see that I'm making sure to use camel case for my uh, variable names. This will become apparent as to why this is important in a moment when we look at the .r file um, and start to interact with these variables a little bit. So current econ. So I'm gonna keep doing this and, and find my uh, next variables and fill this in to create a full and complete data set before taking a look at it. Okay, we're back. So we filled in this entire data set and we've got now our ID variable, which is just a number for the respondent, which runs from one all the way to 3,100 and whatever. Um, we've got the Trump variable, which is again measured on this 100 point scale, as we saw in the questionnaire. FT Trump, to recall, right? This goes from 100 to zero here, with 100 being very warm and zero being very cold. Um, 
we've got our current econ variable, which runs from 1 to 5, uh, 1 being the economy is very good and 5 being the economy is very bad. Interesting to see already some, um, some interesting data here. We've got somebody who gives Trump a rating of 0 and also somebody who gives uh, the economy a rating of very bad. So already we're seeing that there may be some kind of correlation here. Although maybe not always, right? This person is a 100 of one, out of 100 on liking Trump, but they don't think the economy is too hot. Um, however, there, these are, there are these people here, 94 or whatever, think the economy is doing great. So um, party identification as well. This is measured on a seven-point scale as, uh, as uh, uh, collected in the um, PID7 variable. This is one that I found just a moment ago. Um, I guess that um, that's a recode for, that's in the data. Anyway, this is a seven-point scale that ranges from sort of very uh, extre extremely Democratic to extremely Republican, um, or things the other way around. Uh, maybe not. This is also very interesting, right? We've got PID, both people who are, I believe, strong Democrats, and one person who rates Trump as a zero and one that rates Trump as a 100. Um, we've got birth year here. This is the age variable that I was able to find in the data. Now, this is one uh, wrinkle that I want to make sure that we discuss here. And that is that birth year is not age. This is a variable that is separate. However, I'm able to potentially uh, recode that variable or, or manipulate it in order to get a better um, variable out that might give me the age of the person who's responding uh, during the year of the survey. And to do that, what I've done is I've applied an Excel formula. So the Excel formula goes like this. If I double click on this cell, you'll see what the formula looks like. Um, I'll, I'll delete it now so that we can uh, recreate it from scratch. So what I've done here is I've pressed the equals button to indicate that there's a formula that's being created. If you think about the math of the birth year, if I want to create the age variable, what I want to do is I want to subtract the year that it was when the survey was conducted from this person's birth year, and the difference will be how old that person was during the survey deployment. And so if the survey was deployed, as we know, in December of 2018, the code books told us that, we can say 2018 minus 1969, well, I'm not going to type that whole thing in. I'm actually just going to click on that cell in order to bring it over into this, into this other one. And then very carefully, without clicking anything else, I'm going to press Enter. And it's going to calculate that for us. Now, that's going to give you the very first row and none of the others. Uh, what you can do is click on this little green square at the bottom of that cell, click it, and you can drag it downwards. And if you drag it, all the way down to the bottom. I'm not going to do that right now because it takes just a minute because there's thousands of cells. Uh, if you drag that all the way down, you'll see that that starts to apply. Now this is 2018 minus E3, 2018 minus E4, 2018 minus E5. As we go down, oh, we don't want to click on anything because as you'll see, it'll mess up the formula. For each of these people, it will calculate, right? 1979, somebody born in 79 uh, in, tw in 2018 was 39 years old. So we see that that math checks out. But once this is done, once we've got all of these variables, all these values in here, right? This is a complete data set. And so what we're going to need to do now is go into our studio. We're gonna do what we know how to do. We'll save this file as an Excel file, uh, an XSLX file, um, just a standard file. We'll be able to bring that into um, our studio as we know how to do from those early tutorials way back many weeks ago. Uh, and this will allow us very effectively uh, to analyze this data and make sure that A, there's no missingness that we need to recode. We'll have to go back into this data and make some changes. Uh, we'll be able to make sure that there's no um, other potential problems with this, like uh, miscodes or things that shouldn't belong. Uh, and we'll make sure that we're able to do analysis effectively. And so this is exactly what you're looking to create. Uh, minus these little purple things. The purple things don't matter. What we want is, again, an ID variable in the leftmost column, our DV, our IV, and then some control variables, all in one rectangular data set. In this case, it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 column by 3,145 row data set that we will then be able to load into RStudio and perform um, descriptive, bivariate, and eventually regression analysis. So that's the goal. This is, the, this is what we're trying to go towards. This is one of the three products that you'll be uh, creating in Composition 5. Um, and again, really the hardest part of this, I mean, pulling this out of another, you know, sheet into this sheet is relatively simple. There are ways we can screw this up, right? If we get these misaligned or something, that's gonna really, really ruin things for us. Um, but at the end of the day, the thing that we most want um, to, to, uh, to take care with is not this part, but really this part. 
right? The careful reading of the, the um, information that tells us about the data set, the careful reading of the questionnaire to ensure that we actually have variables that do measure the things that we want to measure, the variable levels so that we know what each of these numbers actually means and tells us, um, and then, of course, uh, the data itself, like where it came from, whether or not it is uh, something that we can trust, and whether or not we can find it in the first place. So good luck with that. Uh, let me know if, of course, if you have any questions uh, related to this at all. I'd be very happy, again, to work with you to uh, go on uh, WebEx every uh, office hours or during the, the course, and let's play around with this. Let's try to find data that work for you, and let's try to um, build one of those data sets in a way that will uh, allow you success in the course. So uh, until next time, I'll see you later.